Welcome to Academy's Game Tutorial. In this physics lecture video, we will discuss the basic concept of vector. To know about vectors, first of all, we have to know what is quantity. Quantity can be anything that can be measured or described using numbers. Let us take an example. This is a matter. And we have to know the mass of this matter. We put this matter on a weight machine. And the weight machine gives us a number that is 5 kg or 5 kg. As we can measure this ma mass of this matter and describe in number, so mass is a quantity. In similar ways, length, mass, time, temperature, speed, density, etc. There are many kinds of ex many examples, all are quantities. There are some quantities that can be measured. These are called physical quantities. All the physical quantities are divided into two groups. One is scalar quantity and another is vector quantity. We will discuss between we will discuss the scalar quantity and vector quantity in this chapter. Mainly we will discuss the vector quantity in this chapter briefly. Now to understand better about vector, we have to differentiate between scalar quantity and vector quantity. To represent scalar quantity, we need a piece of information that is magnitude. But in vector cases, to represent vector quantity, we need two pieces of information. One is magnitude, another one is direction. A magnitude can be anything like size, length, or length or value. Let us take an example to understand better about scalar quantity and vector quantity. Suppose this is a road. In this road, a car is moving. This is the car. Now, we say that the car is moving at the speed of 20 meter per second. So, we know the speed of this car. So, this, this piece of information is known as scalar quantity because that only gives us a value or in other words, we can say that this is a magnitude. So, this piece of information is known as scalar quantity. But we don't know whether the car is moving in the right side or in the left side or in the upper or in downwards. We don't know why the car is moving. If we add this information that the car is moving at the right of the speed of 20 meter per second then this piece of information is known as velocity as we can we as we can uh, clearly see that this piece of information need two information one is magnitude that is 20 meter per second another is direction so this is known as vector quantity in other words velocity is a vector quantity so, these are the example of scalar quantity like length, mass, time, temperature, etc. Because for represent this kind of information, we don't need any kind of directional information. But in vector quantity, the velocity, the acceleration, the force, the weight, we need, we need magnitude as well as direction. Let us take an example of force. If we say that two forces are acting in different direction then we have to know where what is the angle between these two forces so as well as we need the magnitude of this force and the direction of this force so force is a vector quantity i think we are clear about what is vector quantity and what is scalar quantity Now, let us see how we can represent the vectors. A vector quantity is represented by two ways. This A is a vector and if we want to represent this vector, we can draw a line underneath this A that represents a vector or if we add an arrow up, upwards of this A, then it is also known as vector. We can represent vector in these two ways. The magnitude or modulus of a vector is represented in that way 
we represent the vector and we put this vector on a modulus or we can say this absolute sign. This is known as absolute sign. Then this vector will give us a modulus or magnitude. This is the representation we will represent mainly we will represent the vector in drawn an arrow upwards of this vector. This is the that will be we represent our vector in this video session. There are some several types of vectors. These vectors are unit vector, equal vector, opposite vector, position vector, like vector, unlike vector, null vector, rectangular unit vector, collinear vector, many more. Let us discuss about this unit vector. A vector of unit magnitude is called unit vector. Suppose A is a vector and the modulus of this A is modulus of A or we can say this magnitude. This is the magnitude. So unit vector eta will be if we divide this vector A with the magnitude or modulus of this A then this represent the unit vector. Let me clear this thing. Then equal vector. Let us take an example of two vector. This is p vector and this is q vector. P vector and q vector. Both these vector has same magnitude and they are located in same direction. Then this p and q will be are known as equal vector. If we draw this q vector in opposite direction but this they all are in same magnitude then this is known as opposite vector now we will we can understand what is equal vector and what is opposite vector now describe uh, now we will see what is position vector give me a time we draw a reference frame this is x axis and this is y axis and this is the origin o and this is a point p if we draw a line from origin o to p then this o to p line represent a vector this is known as position vector which is also known as radius vector so this is called position vector so what is line vector line vector oh, so, uh, pardon me like vector the like vector is something two if two vectors of same type they will they will be same type same type parallel to each other they will be parallel to each other directed along the same direction same direction then the vector will be known that the vectors will be known as like vector then that means this is the p vector and this is the q vector they are same type say p and q are in same type they are parallel to each other and they directed in same mode so this is known as like vector in unlike vector these two are same but the direction is opposite not same direction now it is opposite direction that means that will be move like that this known as unlike vector now talking about null vector a null vector is nothing about a point in def in we can say that a vector whose magnitude is zero is called a null vector or zero vector or we can say that uh, a, a null vector is a point vector who, which has no modulus the modulus of null vector if i say that a is a null vector the modulus of null vector will be zero then coming to the next one is rectangular vector let me draw a three dimensional cartesian system this is the x axis this is the y axis this is the z axis in x axis we represent a unit vector that is known as i in y axis we represent a unit vector that is j and in z axis we represent a vector unit vector that is k cap this is known as cap or head 
So this i, j, k are known as rectangular vector. Rectangular unit vector. Then the last one is collinear vector. If two or more vectors are directed along in the same line or parallel to one another, then the vectors are called collinear vectors. Like these, 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 these are directed in the same way parallel to each other, then these all vectors are known as collinear vectors. We can perform addition, multiplication, subtraction in vector. To, to addition, we, we follow five laws. These laws are general law, law of triangle, law of parallelogram, law of polygon, law of components. We will discuss this law in next slide. So, first we will discuss the general law. Of the two vectors, there is a two vector, one is vector P. Then another one is vector Q. So so if the two vectors, the end or head point of the first vector, the AB vector, this is the end point. This is the end point. This is the end point of the first vector or you can say the head point of the first vector and the initial point or tail point of the second vector and this is the initial point or tail point of the second vector then the direction of the straight line connecting the initial or tail point of the first vector this is the initial or tail point of the first vector and the end or head point of the second vector and this is the end of the uh, end or a uh, head point of the second vector if we draw a line between them then that will give the direction of the resultant vector so this will give us the direction of the resultant vector r so if we add vector p and vector q which represent vector r vector r then this is the direction of the resultant vector and this is known as general law our second law is triangle law if two similar vectors acting at a point there's two similar vectors one is vector a b we represent this vector a b as p vector and the vector p c as q vector and these both vectors are similar and they acting upon a point this b point if two similar vectors at a point at a point can be represented by two consecutive sides of a triangle so these a b and b c are the two consecutive sides of a triangle a b c then the third side then that means this side will give the resultant vector in the reverse order the reverse order means the uh, that will give this a to c this is known as reverse order so if we put out that r is the resultant vector then we can find that vector p plus vector q equals to vector r and from the triangle law we will know what is the result of this vector as well as what is the direction of this vector this is known as triangle law that's all for today's lecture so we we get an overview of vector as it continues with our course we will explore more concepts in details thanks for watching this video subscribe to our channel to get more academic videos.